Hi there. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the Kate Daly Show. It is 3.37. I'm Kate Daly and glad to have you listening. I've got uh, Thomas Dykes and Randall Hinton from Politico. Pyrolytical radio in. I can get that right. <laughs> and uh, we're just glad to have you listening. So I pose the question to these guys. If you know something is right, what does it take to change your mind? Openness. Oh. That you might be wrong. And and as far as truth goes, not all truth is useful at, at all times. Like, let's say you have 15 conspiracies, right? Mm-hmm. And you, you get the you actually know that 10 of the 15 are true. But okay. how much of those are useful to you? Like, when I study politics, I'm like, okay, I want to learn about 9-11, and I want to look at all this government collusion and all these rabbit holes. And and after a while, my mind, I start to just kind of get a migraine from all of the data. And so my higher power and and my meditation on these things, it's like, okay, what's practical? I need to be like Benjamin Franklin, the practical philosopher. How much of this is, is actually useful? We've been talking about Utah legislative actions. That affects you listeners out there that are in Utah. That's actually That actually matters. We've been talking about local politics with this, that facility out by Hurricane School. That, that right. affects people that live here, right. like Randall. Yeah. Right. He's from Hurricane. <laughs> so <laughs> Hurricane. He's from so Hurricane. as far as Got what it. would it take to be right, I'm more concerned with what does it take to know, what do I need to actually know? And and then my higher power and my, my powers of perception in, in prove little by little every day. So it's like, it's just, what do I need to know to, and how that I can apply it? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. it. What about I, you? I, 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 I echo Thomas's sentiments. You can't just ditto. Uh, I'm somebody. not going to just can't ditto. Say ditto. I've got, I've Come got on. my own reason. Okay. Um, in that, um, everyone is where they are. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we get caught up in saying you're right, you're wrong, you know, on all these different debates that we're involved in politics, whatever. But, Everyone is where they are now. They have an understanding of what they came to it somehow. Yeah, right. And and so for them, Mm -hmm. they're right in their own mind. The only thing that can change that is better information. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, or a change in behavior. So to if you're right, how do you change that? Mm -hmm. Education. Understanding, real education, not testing. Well, yeah, because um, then you have a question of where's that information coming from? Yeah, and how do you know if it's right? If, I mean, if you don't have a question, mm-hmm. you know, and you're not learning, it, we, in the learning process, you start asking questions. Right. Well, where did I, you know, why'd they say that? And why would they do this? And what? And when you start asking more questions, you start finding out more information, which changes what may be right in your mind. Because evidence is a funny thing. I can find 10 scientists that will give me evidence in one yeah. way and on the 10 global scientists climate. for another. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, look at Al Gore versus everybody else with a brain. You will see that they don't marry. They don't mix because you've got scientists over here that Al Gore probably bought off and they say that, that global warming, warming is occurring. Then you've got scientists, um, especially under Nixon and under Carter that came out in the 70s and said, Are you, this is ridiculous. We don't, have a, we don't have a problem with this. Are you kidding? Um, and had, what, 5,000 scientists saying this isn't true. So um, even back when they were starting this this evolution of the EPA. So I think that no matter who, that's the problem is that people can be bought off. Science evidence can be bought off, right? <laughs> who benefits? Who benefits? Well, one, one thing I think is critical, though, there are self-evident truths. It says mm-hmm. that in the Declaration. The founder said there are self-evident truths. All men are created equal. Everyone has an inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, clarified as private property rights. If I know that fundamentally government is a gun, every political issue I approach, I'm starting from that philosophy. Government's a gun. The laws all have a consequence. If someone passes a law, there's a consequence for breaking said law. If I know that force is is self-evident with government issues, then that's going to color the way that I approach politics. Whereas if I'm just in the left or right camp, well this radio pundit said this, and I really trust them. I don't have to trust anyone to know that government's force. Mm -hmm. Like, I already know that's self-evident. So if we can understand some basic principles, it makes it a little bit easier. In fact, sometimes a lot easier to kind of get through all of this data that we're faced with, like so many political issues. Oh my gosh, it's endless. Call up 673-1450-888-673-1450. too much. It makes me pull my hair out. Yeah. <laughs> it's surprising <laughs> that mine all is still there. Honestly, it's 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 difficult when you're all wading through yes, all of all it. All of it. When Thank you're you. wait- <laughs> if there's any question, yes. Um it, when you're wading through all of this every day, 
and you're trying to understand it and you're trying to say what's right, where is it coming from, what's the end game of this person. Even listening to John Stoddart, this ex-CIA agent that I played in the beginning of the show today, um, what's his end game? What does he want? Why is he giving us this information? If you're not asking those questions, yeah. something's wrong. Information is right. only as good as what you can use it for, right? Right, right. Well, and Seth, so you have to decipher for well, yourself. Isn't, what's isn't true? it self-evident that that property owner deserves due process? He needs a day in court. He needs to prove whether he's guilty or innocent of whatever breaking whatever law. But the county sheriff said, saw that that's a self-evident truth. I have the right to protect mm-hmm. or defend myself. Right. And one thing that I, I just think that that kind of thing is self-evident. Maybe not the federal policies at the federal level. The other thing I think we misunderstand is federalism on its fundamentals, like states' powers versus the federal powers, what the U.S. Constitution and the Utah Constitution or your states have to do with each other. What is local government? What is the proper role of local, state, and federal government? People Mm -hmm. don't understand those things, so it all comes down to who's going to be president, which tribe's going to be in charge, red or blue. That's really what their basis comes down to. And it's like, well, there's a lot deeper understanding of what government is and should and should not do Mm -hmm. that we just don't scratch because we're red, blue, or independent. You know what I mean? So true. And how in the world, if you've met even a group of 10 people, how can you say that all 10 people fit into one of those categories? You can't. Because even as much as I would agree with the Republican Party, there are things that I don't agree with. As much as I can be an independent, there are things I like about the other two parties. And even the Democrat Party, there's, there's a couple of things, not many, but there are a couple of things that I agree with on that side of the fence. I've never met an individual that only believed along party lines, and that was it, and everything hook, line, and sinker. I've never met one. Well, you know, you? We, we were talking before before we started here that, um, you know, when, when Democrats and Republicans were created in the state of Utah before statehood, that it wasn't a free association. It wasn't, hey, go down to this caucus or that caucus, because the federal government was worried that Utah would come in as a single voting body and all vote the same way. Interesting. And they didn't want that. So they walked or, or they sent people down the, down the road and like either the north side and the south side, or east side, west side, were one party and the other side was the other. And that was, if you were on the east side of the street, you were Democrat. And if you were on the west side of the street, you were Republican. And obviously we've had some changes what? since then, some people leaving parties, but but now we have so many people that are just tied to, uh, I've because been a Democrat. Or, yeah, my parents. Lineage, right? Yeah. 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 My it's parents and my grandparents and my great-grandparents, they've all been X, Y, Z. You know, Republicans are Democrats. Well, that's because somebody told them that's what they had to do so we could get statehood. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean anything. Start to think. Make a decision. Don't do it just based on... You know, I have a friend that's a Democrat solely because of medical issues. They are on uh, disability, and Mm. they will always vote Democrat because of that. They'll always vote for that party because they think, somewhere along the lines, that they are the only ones that care about people getting disability payments and medical payments. Interesting, I know. Hi, caller. Welcome to the show. I love that the the take from the sheriff that can question the authority from the federal government. Yes. Yes. And a lot of people say, like, oh, how dare you? You know, that's the federal government. They know better than you. You're just a little (laughs) community sheriff. Right. Because they're so much closer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're connected with the general public. I mean, they know what's going on at our community level. True. And uh, something that I saw just recently was a video of some police officers, and sadly an officer had been shot, and a local reporter was trying to just report on the situation and the police were going over, pushing and getting them, putting their hands up in their camera and ruining the shot. And, uh, you know, you don't have the right to be here and, and really kind of pushing the guy around. And it was kind of irritating because the guy didn't even understand his rights, his First Amendment rights to be, you know, you, you need to respect the boundaries of a crime scene, et cetera, et cetera. I understand that. But the, those, those law figures, the police officers didn't even bother to question, you know, is, yeah. is my right, does my right extend this far? Did the, the right. gentleman, the, the reporter mm-hmm. say, you know, does my, does my right to be here stop because they say so? It's just this authoritative figure comes and tells you what to do, and just so many people are so compliant and obedient, and not very many people have the will to say why or what, you know what I mean? That's so true. They don't ask questions. No. It's just an authority Questioning. figure coming in to tell you what to do. Trying to get so better information. The, the sheriff that had the courage to do that, that's, you know, much respect to him, and I sincerely hope his community reelects him. And it's, it's like Sheriff yeah. Joe. 
I love that guy, man. If I could grab him and pluck him and force him to be president, I would right. do that so quick because that right. guy's got some cojones, and we need some leaders that have got some cojones. So are we more timid now, caller, than say we were right after the Revolutionary War? Are we more timid to stand up to authority? Um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say yes or no, mm-hmm. but just, just people, I think, I think people have just become too docile, and for whatever, the, the apathy that we have in America... People don't care. It's it's the, it's the Latin. What is it? Panamat circus or whatever bread and circus is. It's mm. as, as long as I'm concerned with getting my my promotion at work to get the Corvette to you know to go on my family vacation. Most people and we we've even talked about it on the show several times. You guys have said it's really hard for the average guy to go through their everyday routine and still try and be involved in the politics. I mean, it's almost like a so part time job to stay informed yeah. and go and vote and keep on top of what your legislator is doing. So I'm not going to say that people are more timid or cowardly these days, but I think we've kind of lost that connection, and I think that's where the the disconnect is. But in our quest for stuff and in our quest for our own careers and in our quest for our own lives, have we really kind of dismissed what what direction we need to go in for liberty, really? Haven't we? Yeah, and and we're we're kind of throwing the baby out with the bathwater when you say it like that, Kate. I Mm -hmm. totally agree. But can you blame somebody? I mean, it's like... You know, you're trying to work as hard as you can, and Thomas is, and I am, and we're all trying to do it because, you know, you want money in the bank in case your kids get sick, or you want to have a house in a good neighborhood, or you want the car with the good safety rating. And I want to be the Joneses. I want to be the Joneses. I don't want to covet the Joneses. I want to be the Joneses, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm I'm just too busy for all that important stuff. Right, right. Well, I I think, too, we've got our cops so busy with uh, speeding and traffic mm-hmm. infractions, and are you wearing your seatbelt, and cell phone, driving. and licensing, and all this, and it, and and marijuana, and that kind of thing, when the sheriff here is showing what he's really there to do, to protect the constituents in his district. I found one thing interesting, caller, is that when the U.S. Marshals come in at the behest of the IRS, they go to the bank because they need to get the property information that they're going to seize. And Sheriff Mack, who I'm sure you've heard of, he's, he encourages county sheriffs to brief every bank in their jurisdiction to refer inquiries from IRS agents to them, the sheriffs. Nice. Sheriff Mack is calling nice. for the IRS <laughs> to start following the law, including no random audits without probable cause as they violate the Fourth Amendment. End wow. quote. So that's exactly what we need. And you've said it perfectly, is that we need that independence from our, our sheriffs. They need to protect us. Well, hopefully we can continue to wake up and, you know, hopefully people can keep hearing stories of good guys like that sheriff and, you know, hopefully lights a spark in each individual and they can kind of realize, hey, maybe I'm next or maybe I'm the next guy that's going to lose this or, right. you know, it's just, it's scary. Well, you're, you know, it's, you're apathetic until it happens to you. Well, for every sheriff like that, you've got a sheriff. Remember the sheriff that went into that town and said, everybody give up your, your guns and let us look through your homes because we're sure that you have guns from, say, 100 years ago that you don't know you have. So let us into your home. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let us into your home without a warrant so we can find these said guns because you never know if they'll go off and kill you by themselves. Or just bring them on down to the, to the police station to make our world a better place. And I just... It's almost like you just can't believe this is for real. That somebody didn't write this as a parody, and it's real. So you, you gotta, you got, we gotta have these stories of the good guys standing up and, and saying, you know, what, what our liberty is supposed to mean. We, we've got a couple good examples of that. Yeah, we do. We have a great yeah. sheriff here. Anyway. And, well, and Kate, and one mm-hmm. thing you keep saying though is you, I, you repeatedly say, and I agree with you on this, that you say we shouldn't idolize heroes too much. Right. Well, now. I think we need to respect that this sheriff, you know, hey, probably might go home and have one too many beers, and obviously not on the clock, or he might not be a perfect husband, and he might be a little bit behind on this tax, or, Mm -hmm. you know, he might... He might be John Wayne on a personal level. Yeah, I get it. And so he's not perfect, but Mm -hmm. when you say we shouldn't idolize heroes, like, don't idolize and think that heroes are perfect, but I mean... Hold this guy up for the community hero he is. He's not. He's not a god. I well, I I, think, I, I mean, tend to think of him as more of an example than a hero. I think hero status is is really not a great place to go because that should be the example. That should be what we're all doing. Not not the segregation of this person's a hero and then there's the rest of us. No, we all need to be engaged like that. What it should be is just an example of what's right instead of saying he's a hero. Because if if we're saying that person's a hero, then we're also saying on the on the other side of the coin that we all can't achieve that because that guy's a hero. That's all I was saying. It's more about well just said. making him an example. 
Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we need examples. That's what we need. Appreciate it. Love it. Thanks for the call. Love your calls. Those are awesome. We'll be right back. You're listening to Fox News, The Kay Daly Show. Well, we have a two-minute segment now. What's yeah, that? We're lucky. Only two minutes in the last. I know. Bit. I know. I come down on the whole hero thing a lot, but I just don't like it. I just think that we do it too much. Like we make everybody a hero, and then that means they're infallible. Like that's right. not the case. Yeah, our freedom Even fighters. Even Chris they Kyle is not a hero. That is not a hero. He's just a guy that went and did his job and tried to stay alive and did his job well because he was good at it. That doesn't make him a hero. No. It just makes him somebody that did well at his job, whatever the yeah, job he got, is. He got paid for every shot, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, he got, you know, he... And he that, makes, that makes him a mercenary. Well, really. and he got all the guys to, you know, honor him and the, and the whole nine yards. He got what he needed from that. And, he and I like the movie, and I thought he was a good guy. I think he's a good guy at his heart, but well, I also think he was Going out on national murdered, talk shows and talking about it. Not by that guy, murder, murder. I mean, I think he got what he wanted out of the deal. Yeah. Yeah. I do think he was murdered by our government, though. I really do. I do not think it was Maybe that he guy. Got sour on that him, young, so. mentally unstable dude. Give me a break. If I hear that one more time, it's, it's some always young, a mentally unstable mental... dude that has a gun. Yeah, like Chris Kyle's stupid enough to put himself in line sight with a with a guy with a gun who's mentally unstable and on drugs. It's just it's so it's such a farce. It's not even funny. It's always anyway. drugs. Don't even get me started. It's always drugs. There needs to be a war on drugs. And what do they do? Shove right him right into a mental drugs. institution so nobody can talk to him and get him far away from Yeah, he's probably got all sorts of new drugs. Get me started. Yeah. It had I more to do with Kyle's business than it had to do with... Uh, you think so? Yep. I think it had a lot to do with Chris Kyle's business. What was his business? His business was really a hired team of mercenaries. His business, he did a lot with the Department of Defense and the government, but his team was a team of mercenaries. Yeah. Had more to do with that. That's who you'd want to hire. There were people out in the woods. You know, here he has a charity function the exact same day that this happens, right? Except it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon in a very crowded place where everybody goes to shoot, yet not one soul is up there shooting. Just him and this young, mentally unstable guy and his friend. And that's it. Not one person from his company is there. When he does these events all the time and all these people show up and all of these people sign up early on and pay all that money to show, go shoot with him for two days, not one person was there when he was shot dead and the police didn't even get there for, what, two hours? Come on, something's weird. Something's up. Well, you make the deal with the devil. And they never did autopsy report, and we don't know how many bullets, and we did, don't know Did they also drop them off in the middle of the ocean? <laughs> sure, feet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See beach. what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, the whole thing's weird. Yeah, so well, me. you make a deal with the devil, you're going to get burned. Yeah. Did I get to everything? I'm hoping I did. Oh, I think, well, I was just thinking about the last one. I was. I didn't realize how much, what time we had, but the, uh, mm-hmm. the gun... Not a gun-free zone, gun-encouraged mm-hmm. zones. Thought that'd be a good time okay. in there, but I don't know. If we have enough time. Yeah, we have a minute or two. I'd hit on it. Why not? Summary. Right. Summarize it. Standardize Summarize it. Summary. I, I just want to help remind everybody that Virgin's one of those. Yeah. Virgin, Utah has it. Oh, you, you <laughs> I said a Virgin. I'm like, how does that play in? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just like. What? Never mind. Sorry. I, I'm halfway listening, but I thought you were talking about a virgin, not the city of virgin. And I was like, well, how does that, how does that work? I don't want to ask too many questions here, but. No means yes. According to that one legislator. Gosh. As long as she's They're all about their own or asleep. That's the point. No means yes. Every politician is about his own career. Sad. It's like. What can I say that would damage me publicly as much as possible? <laughs> I'm going to talk about how rape isn't always rape. Hmm. Because I'm just bored. I need some. Ah, oh. here's an oldie but a goodie. Nice. Hi there. Welcome back to the Kate Daly Show. Can you believe our time is up? Boy, this is the fastest three hours in history. I'm not joking. Every day. All right. The time is 3.56. I'm Kate Daly. Glad to have Randall Hinton and Thomas Dykes in from Pyrolytical Radio, of course. Ending note, guys. I just thought the the whole um, conversation about, you know, uh, having local Mm -hmm. leaders that stand up for their populace kind of reminded me of this um, story that I recently saw about um, how this this city or township in in uh, Philadelphia mm-hmm. or Pennsylvania, not Philadelphia, mm-hmm. um, 
had recently put up signs that said, this is not a gun-free zone. In other words, that they were encouraging right. guns, right? And how uh, non-PC that is. Oh, yeah. But horrible, that reminded right? me of how we've got one in our backyard right here, Virgin, Utah. Yeah. They've had for over the last decade, they've had a law that, it said that everybody in in the city of Virgin is Don't supposed to have. And Randall again. made a call to one of the leaders there just in the to town. make sure it was still yeah. in force. Yeah, you know, you know what reporter. they should have is a sign as you're driving into St. George or Virgin, whatever St. George, that says, "We are an armed community. Guess who's armed?" And then as the, as as Let's those just go to the in, next town. Just guess who has arms and who doesn't. It's your call. That's right. what the sign should say. So as people enter our city, they don't know who has a gun and who doesn't, but they can certainly find out. Well, there's a constitutional carry. They can go carry. in and, and rob and pillage and do whatever they want. Well, there's a constitution carry permit um, or bill in the Utah legislature right now. It was there last year, but they want to allow people to carry, you know, as long as it's not armed mm. or loaded, or loaded, carry right. it openly in Utah. But there was Nelson, Georgia. They have a family protection ordinance where they require the head of each household to have a weapon. You know, isn't it funny that in this day and age, this is not the norm, that this is the exception? Right. Isn't that interesting in this day and age? When, when firearms are so available. Yeah. I mean, come on. This is America. America. <laughs> <laughs> America. America. Well, we guns. love our guns and we get to have them. This is ridiculous that we actually have to have to make note of those that say they are a gun that, that they are a gun community that they're all for guns or for the second amendment. I mean this is ridiculous. Well, the problem is not the guns or the people that have them, it's people that are afraid of them. There we go. Around. Thank you Thomas Dykes, Randall Hinton, thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you Kate. And we have a great show planned tomorrow with Dallas. Don't miss it. We'll be back for more and have a great day everybody.